Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post interview. Today we have invited Ms. Oya Koch, the CEO and founder of Unity. Welcome. Thank you. So Unity, let's get right into the interview. Unity deals with translation and interpretation communication. Did I get that right? Yeah, that's correct. So could you expand on the platform? How does it work? What do you guys plan to achieve? So at the end, we want to uh, develop an AI assistant that will, um, you can imagine kind of an earphone actually you put on your mm -hmm. ear and it seamlessly understand and detects languages that are spoken around you mm -hmm. and automatically interprets, translates it into your ear in your own language, mm -hmm. into Korean for example. Mm -hmm. And um, that's the very basic function of it, like perfect Whoa. interpretation uh, skills. Mm -hmm. And then the second, um, it will hopefully have the uh, function to answer your questions and solve your problems by browsing the internet, mm -hmm. by um, leveraging its um, data that we have fed previously. So I'm curious to ask, how is blockchain tech used within your platform? Uh, good question. So there are several pain points in the language services industry. Mm -hmm. um, one of it is the secure um, transfer or um, sell of translation memory, mm -hmm. an asset that translation uh, companies have. Um, you can think of a really big database of sentences and phrases, uh, translations of sentences and phrases, mm -hmm. and it's a really big asset that they, they use in-house, but they cannot monetize it, they cannot use it outside their company. So we, will, we are enabling them to sell the translation uh, memories, to monetize it in a secure way. So that's number one. Number two is more focused on the freelance um, translators. Mm -hmm. So famous translators, um, unfortunately, are facing identity theft problems online. So mm -hmm. um, people are uh, mimicking or creating fake profiles of those uh, translators online to get jobs from clients. So through our uh, marketplace and through our blockchain, we are going to um, avoid that. So me, a fluent English speaking person, but uh, I've tried using Google Translator and yes. it really doesn't work for me. Yeah. So about the functionality of your platform, will Unity serve as a perfect translator? Yes, so um, there are three factors in creating a perfect machine translator or an AI um, engine. The first is the data. Of course, quantity is important, but quality is very important. So the question is, how do you get the highest quality data? That's why we are focusing on the language services industry and the data that they are having, because it is human translated, human interpreted, perfect translation data. Um, that's our strength. And uh, another uh, two other um, factors of a perfect machine translation tool is um, the, a, a very experienced data scientist team mm -hmm. and the technology itself. But the technology is actually has been around for the last um, 20 years. It's um, um, an MT neural machine uh, translation um, algorithms and tools. Mm -hmm. And then um, about the team, actually, we have been partnering with um, several universities and private companies that have been already working on um, AI or machine translation um, mm -hmm. technology. So we are going to develop it all together with an experienced data scientist team. But our differentiation from um, other competitors like Google Translate or uh, some other translation tools um, or machines mm -hmm. uh, is actually the data that we are aiming to get. So. Uh once the platform grows, the database, the DB, is going to expand as translators, or interpreters input uh, their knowledge, I mean, their experience into the machine or product, maybe? Yes. So the first uh, line uh, or the pipe of uh, data acquisition is the translation memory buyout. So we will buy the translation memories those assets that translation companies have. Um, the second one will be to a marketplace. Um, that marketplace is actually a very simple two-sided marketplace that you can think of. Mm -hmm. And um, it is composed of two main groups, the, uh, the language services providers. Mm -hmm. um, these are translation interpretation companies as well as individual translators and um, interpreters. And the other side is the users, right? Like clients who need language services. 
So we are going to uh, function as a matchmaking platform of mm -hmm. these two sites. So it will be very easy for clients to find the best um, service provider easier and faster mm -hmm. um, and uh, it will be also um, very um, easy for um, translation companies to find cl clients globally because currently usually if let's say a, a translation company of Korea usually um, um, corresponds or ha have Korean clients right yes. but with our global platform they will have a global client reach so not only interpreters can find customers easier, customers can also locate interpreters yes. easier. One, for instance, when a person travels to uh, Japan, maybe. Yes, They'll absolutely. be able to locate certain translators using Unity. Absolutely. So moving on to the development itself, the projects, the details of the project is yet to be disclosed to the public. How far mm -hmm. is the development of the platform and when can the audience expect real life products? So there are two sides of this. Um, first of all, the Unity platform will be um, developed next year mm -hmm. um, however uh, as a main uh, data contributor to Unity um, I actually I am uh, the founder of another company called Oira mm -hmm. it's a platform of interpreters we have launched last year already in October and we have now around a uh, hundred thousand uh, users and 558 interpreters globally it's a running platform um, and uh, OIRA is going to be one of the uh, biggest data providers in terms of interpretation to, uh, to Unity. In that sense, some part is already ready, but the Unity platform itself will be built next year. So uh, in Korea, there is a platform that manages translators and interpreters, and with, their, with the big payment loads and all the businesses, yeah. it seems having a legitimate contractor between the two parties seems to be a more manageable and efficient idea. Yeah. Will Unity have a payment wiring and legal issue problems or do you have solutions ahead of that? Oh, we don't have any um, legal issues with, uh, with payments. Mm -hmm. uh, however, we have some uh, functional issues with the payment gateways, mm -hmm. traditional payment gateways such as PayPal or Stripe, which mm -hmm. supports you know, credit card transactions. Yes, yes. Uh, but we are going to use uh, cryptocurrency, Unite tokens for payments uh, to in eliminate those limitations. That makes me want to ask, uh, once customers engage in your platform, I'm pretty sure that the price, the initial price, token price of mm -hmm. your platform will also be a crucial matter. Yes. Do you have any measures to, uh, per se, uh, prevent the token price from flopping or you know, being one of the so-called dead coins? Yes, um, so we have um, a, a measure that we are planning to uh, input, for example, imp um, implementing some sort of a, a Unai, uh, the name of the coin is Unai, or, Uni or Unity points on the system as well, so that the clients will have the option. And that, I mean, the, the price of that uh, Unity uh, point will be fixed. Mm -hmm. And they will also have an option to uh, make transactions with the cryptocurrency, Unity cryptocurrency, Unai, U-N-A-I. Um, so we will have, uh, we, will, we will be offering two options for the clients to choose the payment methods. Now what's the specific difference between the two uh, tokens? So um, Unite, Unite token is a token that is actually traded mm -hmm. in exchanges and uh, the price of it uh, will be changing by mm -hmm. time but um, on our platform uh, Unai points will have a fixed price mm -hmm. so that um, if uh, users would want to pay with uh, Unai point mm -hmm. uh, they will be able to um, I mean it's not listed mm -hmm. it's not a cryptocurrency it's so, a uh, point so that they will have the option to choose one if a person is expecting or you know if a person wants or expects Unite token price to go up, they will choose Unite token uh, payment system, and if they just want to cash it out, they'll use Unite points. Is that correct? Not only to cash out, it's uh, both. For example, as a user, mm -hmm. um, you will have the option to pay with uh, Unite point, mm -hmm. uh, which has a fixed rate. Mm -hmm. But at the time, if, for example, the um, value of Unite token mm -hmm. is high, um, then perhaps you would want to use the point, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and keep the United token. So you will have the opportunity to, um, to choose both. Uh, so finishing up on our interview, do you have, any, so you're here in Korea. Yes. So do you have any last comments for our Korean audience? Well, actually, uh, some of our partners uh, are Koreans like Jenny Talk um, or EB Coin. Uh, and I'm really happy to be in Korea. 
uh, and thank you all for watching. Uh, so uh, I kind of wanted to ask you another yes. favor. Uh, I heard you speak a little bit Japanese. Yes, I, I heard do. that you're very fluent. <laughs> so uh, any one or two sentences in Japanese, maybe to the camera over there. Yeah, to the Japanese audience. Uh, Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Still, uh, your last comment in yeah. Japanese, maybe. はじめまして、こちらですユナイティのあのコファウンダーですえっと今回ユナイティっていうプロジェクトで韓国に来ております。よろしくお願いします。Thank <笑> you so much for your time. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Miss Oya Coach, the CEO and founder of Unity. Thank you for watching.